That's right. It's Monday night. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we just saw the last win of the Capitals season. If you're watching the live feed, I was streaming live, but it's Monday night. Sports on the Hill podcast, True Radio Network. Kind of a sad day for hockey fans. We got to recap this season and uh, talk about what could have, would have, should have, but wasn't. So we're going to break that down. You already see I got Robbie G and Anna K already standing by, ready to get this uh, final episode of Caps Talk over with for the season six. I mean, season seven, I'm sorry. Oh, boy. I don't even want to go no further because I want to go ahead. I don't even want to go any further. Let's go ahead and get this started and over with because I still have some feelings about this uh, past series. Robbie G, how are you doing tonight, good sir? Uh, I'm good. I know why it's confusing because we started the season in season six and it ends in season seven. It's always confusing, but it's always going to have to happen when we got a uh, a show that goes year round, right? We're not going to be able to, we follow the baseball seasons, but uh, it's it's hard to get all the sports to be in one season or the other. But yeah, it's it's frustrating. Uh, I was not, I was hoping we would not do the season uh, finale for the Caps so soon. I was a little bit worried. I mean, I, I, we talked about it from the beginning that I think uh, the Panthers are a juggernaut, but we really, we could have beaten them. We'll discuss this um, in, in this segment about there were the opportunities to beat this team, but I don't know how far we would have gone. You know, hearing some of the injuries that we'll talk about at the end of the segment now, you know, even if we had gotten past this team or we're going to get past a Tampa Bay team who's a two-time defending champions with an injured team, are we going to then, you know, it, it would have been an up, I think we could have beaten the Panthers. I don't know if we would have gotten that much further, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, well, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're out. I'm happy that the Penguins are also out. Um, and uh, I kind of feel a little bad for Toronto that they're out as well. They they had 10 times, Carol, they've had chances to clinch a series and move on. And 10 times in a row they have failed. So I know that Caps fans are not feeling great tonight, but just be happy we had that cup that's hanging right above uh, Anna and you know, right to the right of Carol and um, on uh, the the screen. Also, if you're watching live on Twitch or hello to everyone on Facebook. Also on Carol's uh, YouTube is on his Twitch, on his uh, Facebook as well. So um, lots of ways to catch us live or if you're listening uh, in the audio podcast. But uh, we'll, we'll break down the caps a little bit more. We'll also talk baseball it's the third week in a row, Carol, that we've lost four games and won two. I, you know, I've been like keeping track of the stats. I'm like, we're, we're consistently losing two out of every three games for every series, it seems. Um, so I know that you and hopefully Brian Brennan will be able to join us tonight. I know he's got a busy schedule, but the plan is for him to maybe talk about those Rangers we, uh, we were just mentioning and as well talk a little baseball. Uh, and then I know Carol will do a quick Mystics update. And then we'll end uh, with the NBA playoffs, uh, recapping the end of all the round two games and talking about these uh, conference finals as well. But uh, let's get into some uh, Caps talk first. Uh, Anna, outside of um, the Caps, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Crazy weather today. I don't know if you guys got that. Yes, very crazy. I I was supposed (laughs) to take pictures of a track thing this afternoon. It got canceled preemptively because they thought the weather would be bad. But then the weather was really great at the time when the track meet would have happened. It was bad earlier. It's it's just been kind of crazy. It it was really, truly bizarre. And and I had one of those moments where we couldn't get one of our dogs in this morning. And I was freaking out all day thinking, this is going to be terrible. So I rushed home on my lunch break. And um, sure enough, that little pain in the ass was downstairs. Uh, so it'd been inside the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. So I was, you know, hearing I'm like, oh, it's raining, it's the thunder. And and there she was just happy go lucky. So yeah, but this weather is just it's we humidity and whatnot. I've got certainly got the humidity hair going. But um, all right, like Carol said, let's just rip this bandaid off and get through this game five. Um, so first period at seven Oh nine, TJ Oshie gets number four, the power play goal tip in, which seemed to be sort of a pattern for him assisted by Carlson and Cousy second period, uh, within the first three minutes and 38 seconds, uh, we see the caps get goals from Schultz followed by Oshie. And then unfortunately everything fell apart because we had a three 
zip lead and we somehow managed to lose five three so i just <laughs> I, I this is the shaking my head and wanting to i i don't even know this was a frustrating game yeah, I'm gonna let uh, Carol give his thoughts first, <laughs> and uh, see how much he throws me under the bus, and then I'll I'll, I'll see how much I'll say after that. Robbie, no, I gotta do it, Robbie. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for it. I'm, I'm I'm letting you have the chance. Oh boy! This game was one of the most, I guess, frustrating games that I've uh, watched this team play in the playoffs. Uh, Florida is a hell of a team. We know that broke records going, and just the way that they can turn it on and make one, you make one mistake and they take advantage of it. And this was, that was the culmination of this game. The Capitals played a, a stellar period and a half of hockey where they had everything in control. They were doing everything they needed to do to win, getting the puck out, getting it in deep, staying true in the uh, neutral zone so they couldn't get speed. And then one bad bounce and floodgates open. And I'm going to touch on it, guys. I'm not even going to touch on it because a lot of folks don't understand the the severity of losing Wilson in the series. Top line minutes, penalty kill, and power play. And the reason for some of those miscommunications was because of the line shifting that we know. Not saying they weren't familiar with each other, but in those crucial situations, you know, when you've been on the line together, you know who's taking who. And you know who's covering who, and we saw a couple of times two people taking one guy in the floor, the guy being wide open, going right down the middle, and you know make a hell of a shot and score. So I mean, I totally feel that if Wilson was there, definitely this series was a winnable series. And yes, Robbie, I have to throw you under the bus. After all the years that we've been doing this show, and for Capitals playoff hockey. The rule is if you don't see any of the goals scored, you turn the game off. And the other team scores, you turn the game off. You just yep. take us down with the ship. <laughs> yep, yep, so yep. Put some of the blame on you. You, you do. I deserve it. I, well, I'm a very superstitious person. For anyone tuning in, we've got a lot of people joining us on Facebook. I appreciate everyone for watching. Also, thank you, Carly, for resubbing a Bruins fan who also feels a bit of uh, misery. Um, uh, today. Uh, yeah. So Carol's right. We have a rule. If we start to lose and we were winning before I turned on, I have to turn it off. It, it was, I couldn't turn away. And I also had a friend with me I won't name names. And there have been times in the past where he has cursed our team and the whole first period, I kept us all outside and we didn't watch it and we were winning. And I go upstairs to watch, you know, put Zach in the shower. I started watching they score the first goal and I come downstairs and boom, boom, they score, but I just can't, I can't turn away. And I didn't. <laughs> and even my friend who I thought was the jinx left. And I was like, oh, maybe he's the jinx. He's not watching anymore. Maybe they'll come back. <laughs> nope. It got a lot worse. So it was clearly me that jinxed them. And I'm sorry, uh, Caps fans. Oh, I will. You I will. Be a bottle, man. I had a bet. That's why I was really salty because I knew that game was going to be the pivotal game. And I had to come over with $75 for a bottle on a bet that I made on the series. So, yeah, I, I, I know it's, it's a, it's a bummer. I do. I do think that they are a very good comeback team, whether or not I screwed the juju or not. Um, you know, they had a history of doing this a lot this season, including doing it to the capitals during the regular season. Um, and uh, it very frustrating to watch. Um and I should have probably turned it off, but I also knew that that was potentially going to be one of the last hockey games I got to watch this season with the Capitals. So it's hard also to turn it off in that scenario, but um, just frustrating. We've seen this story a lot. I know that people last week were like, you can't say, you know, they were questioning it on, uh, on comments on Facebook saying, you know, every year is a different story. I know that Carol, you've always kind of said that you kind of have to put the previous book behind you and you write your next chapter. Uh, but the same time some of the same things start to happen year after year and you start to question things the big thing is obviously injuries you know i i just think that a lot of these players played through a lot of injuries we'll talk about that after the next game but i think it's very evident looking back now that they just wasn't you needed a hundred percent capitals team to beat a team like this and right. they didn't have it and 
Um, they just lost out on a couple of inches here and there, you know, a couple of inches, you know, you have a Tom Wilson and his physical force, maybe he's able to stop that avalanche of goals. Maybe if he scores one goal coming back and it becomes like four, two at one point, you know, maybe that makes a difference and it stifles some of that momentum. Uh, so it's, you know, losing a player like him, losing the speed of Backstrom, um, it's definitely frustrating. Uh, Anna, what are your thoughts on this? No, I agree. I'm uh, Carol. Uh, you know, we're going to constantly have uh, Tommy's back for everything. And he was a huge force that was missed. And I do think that the team did as much as they could to, to sort of fill that, but um, you can't replace number 43. It was a huge, huge presence on the ice that, that we needed just, you know, in the physical sense, but also he's kind of taken that leadership role and, you know, just his uh, overall game this year was just on. So it sucked to see that. And then again, uh, man, it just didn't, it just was not 60 minutes, plain and simple. It was like maybe 35, <laughs> you know, but it, it definitely was the, you know, for to go out to lose, you know, have a, a three nothing lead and then, and then to blow it just uh, that one hurt a lot. <laughs> Yeah. I'm surprised so, I'm not banned from social media for my um, reactions. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> no, I, I think that you're fine. I want to get to some of the reactions actually on our Facebook Live. We're actually a pretty lively chat today. I appreciate everybody for oh, tuning good. in. Um, Eric was saying hi, uh, um, Hill people. He said, uh, Cavs fans are fine. We knew them dudes look tired and ready for a beach vacation. Um, he also says, all Caps new, new blood. Hope they get some in the off season. And I, I said that I agree. Uh, he, he also thought I was a stand-up guy for owning up to it. Although my dad then responded that he doesn't think it's my fault. But I, <laughs> I'm not surprising. Uh, but my dad knows my superstitious ways. Uh, and then uh, Brian uh, Bingham um, said, life as a Caps fan, when, you, uh, when they bring you in, you really believe in them. Boom, disappointment. I didn't really give them much of a chance before the series, but those first three games I was all in. Then you know the story. And then uh, Eric said that they missed Wilson. So, uh, yeah, I mean, all true. Yeah, we got sucked into a series that we thought many didn't think we had a chance. But, yeah, Carol, what are your th- some of your thoughts? You also have to remember that they didn't even have this team making a playoff. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that they were able to do what they did, even with the injury, started out strong, you know, young goaltenders, you know, they, they went through a rough stretch, still had the AC locked in for most of the second half of the season. And I mean, like I said, they played a, a, a great series against the top seed, took them to be six games. Some folks had them getting swept. But like I said, it was a game of inches, a couple of bounces here that were going their way early, starting didn't go their way late. So, I mean, Everybody could talk about, you know, disappointment and everything like that. But, you know, you have a core of players. You have young guys that's, you know, getting their first NHL experience. We had, what, 12 or 13 players get their first goal or first point at some point throughout this season. So it isn't about going out getting other players from other teams. It's about the season that they had now where they had players getting experience that have been, uh, you know, with the team and know the system that now you can see if they can develop and contribute without having to worry about going to go pick up this guy, or that guy, when you make a name for yourself. And then that's how you build, uh, you know, going forward, have a foundation and you build a dynasty where you can have like the Capitals have been for the last, what, 15, 16 years. And I get the fans' disappointment. And I saw some articles talking about, oh, we should have more than one, uh, you know, one championship and all that. And I'm like, really? The man, you know, I'm just happy he's not Charles Barkley and doesn't have any, right? So I mean, <laughs> like the culture of hockey in DC. He is to me the greatest DC sports athlete ever. Mm-hmm. And that's saying a lot for being a, a Washington football fan. He's come here as a rookie, did everything in his power. Every year he gives us all, and then he finally gets him to, you know the combination of, you know, being a world champions. And the fans, I get it. They greedy. They want more. They want more parades. But take a step back and just realize where we came from, having a number one pick, being able to draft him, to actually fulfilling the dream of him getting the cup. We've had plenty of number one picks in hockey, football, basketball, that's never even snipped the championship. And this man has done it, stayed healthy, breaking records all along the way. 
and folks had a nerve to ridicule or criticize this man. I'm like, man, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that I won't stand for. Like, I mean, that that's just that just pisses me off, to be honest, because there there is nothing you can say about Alex Ovechkin that is a negative. I mean, just considering how we. I don't know. When I was on with Gil last night, I think I I needed to like say that, you know, sometimes we, we do have to step back and we have to acknowledge those that two year uh, COVID um, season was like up and down. It was so crazy. And there were fans, there were no fans, there was um, players out sick with COVID. And so, you know, we didn't never really had a hundred percent um season like and none of the teams you know everybody had something you know injuries and, and but COVID was always kind of like that black cloud lingering unfortunately and I think that it's like you know going forward I'm like in my opinion it's like it's only to get better from here and I agree you know you got to get those young players out there um and the chem you know I feel like the the leadership is there and what an honor it would be to God to be a rookie and to skate under you know, an Ovechkin, a Nikki, an Oshi, a, a Willie, you know, like that's just something that the, that those rookies, like they're going to look, you know, so forward to that and give it their all. So um, I don't, you know, I'm going to continue to root for this team regardless. And yes, there's frustrations, but that's in like every sport. I mean, come on. Yeah. But I, I think that COVID just sometimes, you know, it was, it was the topic and then we moved on and then, but we, we can't really forget that there were, you know, two seasons of kind of a wonky <laughs> seasons, more or less. It wasn't a hundred percent what we had expected. So. For sure. Uh, let's get into the last game. Um, you know, I think again, you know, they gave us this false hope. I think that's like kind of the theme of the series for me is like a, false hope like you really believe they could do it and a lot of people I talked to a lot of Caps fans believe they were the better of the two teams and I think now looking at it if we were a fully healthy team I think we are the better of the two teams and honestly yeah. I thought Sammy played pretty well I know that he allowed five goals in this game but I'm not going to say that they were all you know his fault or at all, all you know like I, I think it was a lot of it was on the defense a lot of it's on John Carlson we've got to have a really big talk about him after this next game um because he's very frustrating because i think his offensive potential is worth the eight million dollars a year but i'm not sure if his defense is and ultimately both need to be because eight million is a big hit on our salary we can do a lot with that yeah. money carol but i don't know who's going to take four more years at eight million from what they saw this year like he's not doing himself any favors on the open market like it's you know you can't cut people it's not football like um you know, anyway, well, let's talk about this next game, but that's going to be my point of discussion afterwards for sure. Yeah, sounds good. So um, here we go. Game six. Boo. Uh, no goals in the first. And then in second period, um, Nick Dowd, who I think had a fantastic series, him and, and Hathaway, I praise them. Um, he scores at 344, assisted by Hathaway and Larson. Uh, Florida scores at 613 to tie it up 1-1. One, one. Uh, third period, Backstrom. Great to see him. Um, score Tiffin assisted by Schultz and TVR and then Florida scores twice but then here we go with uh, TJ Hoshi the deflected uh, power play goal at 1857 and I think this is when everyone was like holy shit like we got this and this is so exciting and then uh, not so much because at 248 in overtime um, we lost so yeah, real quickly, I, I do want to talk about TJ Oshie because um, I think he was our MVP of the series. Yes. I know that he had had a rough playoffs a couple of years ago being injured and all that sort of stuff. He showed me why I know that we're going to have to move some pieces, but he can't be one of the ones that we move, right? Absolutely he is, not. He's the future of this team. Um, he put up four power play goals in four consecutive games, which has never happened before right. uh, in the playoffs for the Capitals. It's just an incredible feat to try to get it to overtime. And my heart breaks for him. It breaks for all the Capitals. You know, I think that uh, they wanted it. I mean, if you watch the posts, you know, I, I think that they would just didn't have enough in them. And I think now that we know the injuries and extent of that, I just don't think that they had enough to push through. And the, her, the, the, the cats are a good team. I mean, like the Panthers are not the Florida Panthers 
that we've known for you know years and years and years. And I do think we could have beat them with a healthy team, but we didn't have a fully healthy team. And I know that that's the reality that happens a lot come the playoffs, but uh, I think it's the key people that are hurt. I think Ovechkin wasn't himself, you know, only having one goal in the series, a lot of assists. And I really feel like he was trying, but uh, he just didn't have the speed in which he needed to get by some of these guys. And, you know, Backstrom's lack of speed really hurt him in this um, and uh, other players no too. I know Tommy, <laughs> you know, lost to the physicality and, you know, those three players alone could have been a difference makers in this series, right. If they were fully healthy yeah. and ready to go and, but they weren't. And uh, Carol, what are your thoughts on uh, this disappointing uh, game six? Yeah, I mean, I can't even really chalk it up to the injuries, chalk it up to not being fast. They played a hell of a series. If they, they, you know, the games that they won, they were able to sustain, played 60 minutes, didn't allow Florida any gaps or anything. And the games that they lost, like I said, it was a game of inches, a few pucks that didn't go their way. We saw in their 18 year, Pucks was, you know, bouncing their way. They, they had to hustle, get to the boards, but puck bounce right there, boom, go. And, you know, we had that going on for a little while, but the momentum swung and they, you know, didn't have that extra step, I say, to get the momentum back. But they played this team tough. This was the best team in the league, you know, breaking all types of records. They pretty much locked this team down when they were playing their hockey. But when they, you know, allow Florida to press it because it's a game of time and space. And you saw how when Florida was going, they were very aggressive. And then when they were doing, you know, their plays and making their passes, they were on point. But you saw at some points in the series, the Caps were having the same opportunities. And sometimes in a click, boom, tape to tape pass. And then sometimes, boom, the puck bounces over the stick or under the stick or as a uh, – Florida back checked and they did a good stick, uh, a stick check to, you know, the puck where they didn't get a chance to one time. There were a couple of bad decisions made in certain situations that led to odd man breaks for Florida that, you know, come with, you know, experience in the, in the playoffs. But I mean, I'm not sure what everybody else saw with John Carlson. I, I didn't have a, a microscope on in the whole game, but for folks to demonize him and say that, you know, he's the reason I Nobody's perfect. And it's a six game series. So just like in football, there's tape. So if you have a weakness, teams are going to try to exploit it and find different ways to exploit it while watching tape and putting you in those similar situations. Being that our forward mix was not the same as it was because when we saw when this team was healthy and played as a whole unit, the forwards was there with the, with the D-man, the D-man was at the forwards. They were getting the puck out and supporting each other and doing everything well. With the one injury to Wilson, as I said, there's a trickle-down effect on all the lines, on the penalty kill, and on the power play. But that's why I say it's the injuries has an effect on it, right? Because, I mean, you've kind of gone back to it, and I think that you've come around to where I am. Like Put the whole thing up and bring in new blood and all this other BS. Then you're you're in rebuild mode again. You had chemistry. This team knows what they can do when it plays their brand of hockey. Now it's about just getting those young guys that got the experience this year that have that speed and have that get up and go that we saw in flashes to get more consistent with it. And the way you do that is by keeping them on the ice, not by bringing in some other free agent that's going to take up minutes and you hope that he meshes with that line. In the meantime, this young guy who already showed chemistry to show that he knows the system is sitting on the bench, losing time, losing chemistry with the people he was playing with. And then you're on a wing and a prayer. Then everybody's like, oh, this team sucks. The GM sucks. Why did they bring this guy in? That's a waste of money because everybody has knee jerk reactions. We saw it took four years under trust to get to the ultimate combination of winning the, uh, the championship. This is year two under live. You're letting everybody's ready to blow it all up. Well, I, I think that part of it is because year two under Laviolette and previous regimes ended up with conference finals and it isn't here. So then the question is, is it the coaching? Is it the players? Yeah. Just bad luck with the injuries? I mean, there's it's a lot of ways you can yeah. market this. COVID, I mean, everything. That there's, the there's too many things. A different market to coaching and to play in. I tell mm-hmm. folks that all the time as an ex-athlete in this area. In other places you play in, like New York and L.A., after a certain time, you still have some cultural stuff. You in this area, there's a lot of distractions, and if you don't get the right players, 
that have that dedication and won't fall for those distractions, then you're going to have issues. And unfortunately, with all the teams in this area, they've made some bad choices on personnel. That's why I don't mean to be getting the football right now because we're going to talk a little football. But if you look at the commander's draft this year, they all have a trend. They were all three or four year starters that have experience and that they're not taking a, a leap on to say, okay, we saw flashes of athleticism. He could be a good fit if he, uh, you know, everything goes properly, he develops. When you're getting people that have been starting and you know you can depend on them, that's a whole different, you know, mentality you have as a coach that has to play. So we've gotten some bad players in all of our sports, but to me, the Capitals has been one of the more solid organizations in this area when it comes to finding the right personnel and putting it together on the ice. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally see that point of view, and that might be right. It's just interesting that no one else seems to see it that way. Everyone else seems to want to blow it all up. I'm not saying yours is right or wrong or yeah, theirs I mean, is right or wrong. It's just interesting that that – I mean, I like your approach better because it means that we get a championship faster than a, than a complete blow up, in my opinion. And it's but, early to say that. Two years under the new coach and you're ready to blow everything up when you already have. You well, know you okay, can, well, let's get into the goalie situation. Do you think that those that's the tandem you want to throw them back out there again? Or do you do you want to get a veteran goalie? And I'm sure they're going to get a veteran. I'm sure they're going to get a veteran to have on the roster. They was trying to at the trade deadline. I don't really see... The goalie. The only goalie I want is Flurry, and he's not coming here. And I don't see anybody else in the market that I would even want. Uh, I don't even really you know. You're you're more better on the free agent market in hockey than I am. So I have to look and see who's. We also don't have the cap space, so then we have to make yeah. a real decision. Like it, maybe you could move John Carlson for a goalie, but you need to move some big piece. What other big piece that we? Have? I mean, it's basically Can either structure deals like they do in the NFL. Can they? Nope. Nope. Nothing. Not. Nothing? Nope. Mm-mm, nope. It's what it is. It's exactly that. That subtle. It's eight million for four more years. And there's no way they can like extend them out and spread it out. And they they can't do that. No anymore. baseball. Nothing. Nothing. It's hard cap. <laughs> no baseball. It's hard. It's a very difficult. Which is why people were questioning this move with Carlson when we signed him. Is like, is he going to be worth eight million dollars? You know, years down the road. Right. I mean, I really don't see him as a. As a player, I, I like him, but I just he was a minus four in the most important game of the season. How we know <laughs> the minus four, you could, he but could he was on the game. ice. I mean, look at where the he was. Change it could have got on as soon as they scored it. That plus minus is cool during the regular season, but in the playoffs, uh, okay, ignore two, that eye test. He played terribly the last two games. He has a, it's a six game series, he has a rookie with him. I think he, I think he was bringing the rookie down. I legitimately think that there were times that Ferrari was playing better than him. Nah, I can't I can't agree with that statement. We've seen Carlson shut folks down, and you and like I say once again, you have to give Florida credit. Yeah. Florida, just like their top pairing was able to contain our top line without Wilson. You know they had their top line healthy, and you know we saw what their top line was capable of. No one's going to be able to shut them down. For six games, let's remember we held them to two and one goals in two in in, in the uh, victories. So there had to be some solid defense. This team was averaging four goals a game. This team broke records for goals. Oh, I it's agree. He line. played well in the first fe- a couple of games. That's the whole the defense did, but a, in a in a in a playoff series, they're going okay, to be there. There, there's a whole different dedication. So, Carol, your theory is we bring everybody back. I, I it's too early to blow it up. Now, after next year. Same thing, exit first round, then, yeah. But after two years, especially with like Anna keeps bringing up the COVID situation, not having a, a real f- first season in the lobby left because of that, you got to at least give him three years to get to, to see what he can do when everybody on the same page with the core that he has. Then if it doesn't go well after the third year, okay, I can I can say, yeah, let's, let's make some changes. But after two years, I feel that's too soon. Yeah, let's get into some of these comments because a lot of people on Facebook have a lot of opinions on uh, what we're saying. <laughs> so um, so uh, Eric was saying the team didn't have the postseason energy. I took a, f- a few games to mentally get used to the first round exit, but it's been a few years since the cup. I don't blame Obi for wanting to drop out of sight from the political haters too. He's already on a plane back to, to Russia, but you know, it's got family there. Uh, you know, it's, it's an issue. I know the optics 
people want to make a deal of it, but like he's got a lot of family out there. I'm not surprised that he went there right uh, no afterwards. One, no one has, a, in my opinion, no one has a, a place to um, to to judge what he chooses to do. He's, you know, it, for enough. sure. He he played his heart out. He played as well he as did. he could have played with everything on all things considered. Uh, a good friend of the show, uh, Gil, uh, um, the co-host <laughs> of the Power Play Point podcast, says, the harsh reality is this team is one of the oldest rosters in the league. More than anything else, they need to get younger and faster. Um, so, I mean, that that speaks, uh, like, I understand what Carol is trying to say. If we think that next year is the year, then that's one thing. But, like, with this aging core, how many years can you keep that going is going to be a question. Uh, Brian agrees. This is the core. Uh, Brian Bingham says, um, uh, the core isn't getting younger. You either rebuild, bring in free agents to help that core players. Any organization should always be mixing in young players, the farm system. You should never um, just be staying the same. Uh, you get passed by doing that. And I think that this year they did bring a lot of young guys up. So I thought they I, did, know, yeah. And, you know, we had more you know, young guys score this year than any year I can remember in recent history. It's just whether or not they'll get more permanent placements on the roster going forward and whether or not they can contribute uh, more than just a game and, you know, coming in and just having that energy and adrenaline of their first couple of games right. or whatever to go into it. But like, how do they do over the course of a long season? Uh, Brian was questioning Carlson was bad. I'm not sure why you can't acknowledge that Carol, do you actually want to double down and think, I mean, in the end of the series, when it mattered most, what your thoughts on John Carlson is what? I can't put it on. I can't put it on him. I can't put. I can't single him out because we saw when this team was playing as a unit. No matter who was on, all five men were playing as a unit. So because he was, you know, the person that was closest to the net when the goal was scored, doesn't necessarily mean he was a person responsible for the goal given up. There were breakdowns in the but the forwards and communication at the circles, crossing the blue line, coming across the red line in some cases where Florida was able to get them, as I said, sucking in a forward and a defenseman on one man and the other man coming clean down the middle. You can't blame Carlson for that. He's only one. He can't split himself in half and cover two men if the forward takes the wrong man in the transition game because Florida does a lot of crossing and crisscrossing around when they cross the blue line. You can't blame him for that all the time. There's the communication between the whole five on the ice. So, yes, he was on the ice when they had it. Yeah, he might have looked bad giving up the goal in front of the net, but he's the last line of defense. Therefore, the defense broke down before it got to him. So, therefore, if you want to say throw him away, then throw away the whole team then because the whole team failed in those situations. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I, I people are not agreeing with you on Facebook. The um, all right, <laughs> all right. Gil I says, already know that. Right. Gil, Gil says, "Damn right, Anna." Tom says, "I respect Carol's opinion, but he thinks Carlson was good on defense, and he's been hitting the crown too hard." And then uh, Brian also says, "It's never one guy." <laughs> I just four... got that. <laughs> but um, and, and Brian, I'm doing that right now. It's actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink crown on a reg. I drink 1738. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and then Brian Bingham says it's never one guy, but his poor play stood out to many. So, uh, you know, I, uh, we can all agree to disagree. I don't, you know, I don't, uh, but it's just not, um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think he played particularly well, but I also don't think it's very easy to move that contract. Well, like, like so, I said all the time, I don't, I don't, I haven't studied him as closely as some of the folks that probably hate him do. So I'm sure he's made some mistakes and made some bad decisions. All players do. I'm just not ready to throw him under the bus and say he was the reason why, you know, we lost the series. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Anna, what are some of your thoughts? <laughs> I've, I, I will agree with, with the Facebook uh, fans that um, he had two very shitty games. And the last two that we, I guess we just wanted more from him because I think we were just sort of picking at anything at that point to say someone's got to come in and, you know, without, um, without Wilson and just the way everything was going and every, everything was so tense that you, you wanted a hero. And maybe some of us were hoping Carlson could have been that and he wasn't for two consecutive games. But I have always kind of had him in my corner. I, you know... I don't know what to think about. Eight million is is a shit ton of money, so it's uh, it's going to be a lot. But I think you also have to think at the playoffs. His statistics were not great, but during the season they were 
they were okay. They were good. <laughs> so let's just, you know, it wasn't like he was absolutely horrific the whole time. So, um, yeah. and let's, let's be honest, he, he, I, I can he put stayed him healthy and he stayed COVID, you know, he wasn't on the COVID protocol. So there's something to be said about that. Top 15 defensemen in the league. Top 15, I said. But exactly. But I mean, that's just it. Like, look at his season stats. The, I have no complaints, you know. But I will say that the two the two games that we needed him to step up um, didn't happen. But you know what? You could say that about just about uh, anybody at that point. You can't put it on one person. I mean, it, I mean, it was to me. It really wasn't. It was a hard fought, you know, series. Like I said, the. The games where they, you know, got five, you know, they came back from behind, but it wasn't, you know, really a blowout except for game two where they jumped out there and, you know, it was pretty much over early. But it, right. it was a fight. And, you know, strategy, you know, it's, it's – they, they uh, you know, the Caps outplayed them early in the series. They made adjustments. And like I say, with the healthy full roster, they were able to do some things that the Caps weren't able to adjust to. And that's why I say that's what I – that's why I really can't say that the team failed and – they weren't built for the long run. It, you know, things just worked out in their favor with, you know, some of the bounces with the adjustments they were able to make. Yeah. Like I, say, I don't think folks really just take a He's in our bedroom. step back and see how big the Wilson, that that loss was, you know, to me. That's that huge. Was, that was the, like I say, he played on the top line, penalty kill and the power play. So yeah. his absence is affecting all three phases of your game. And then you're I mean, and Carlson did get an assist in game five. <laughs> There's something to say. I mean, just like we talked about Hathaway <laughs> when, uh, when he came up to the third line from the fourth line. He wasn't the same player. He was responsible for giving up two goals, you know, that changed the momentum of that game. I don't hear nobody ready to throw him off the team because he made a mistake, but because he was in a position that he wasn't used to being in because he's used to being a fourth line player and a third line player. Now you get more minutes, more responsibility with the line that's, you know, probably – a uh, faster pace, a lot more offensively skilled line than he's used to going up against. And he looked like he was out of sorts. But nobody wants to throw him under the bus and say, oh, he cost us that game. Or well, I did, but nobody else really wants to point that out because they want to blame Carlson all the time. So I'm just saying, you got to look at the whole team, all phases, and who makes mistakes. You can't just highlight the like because you don't like a guy when he makes a mistake. Oh, he, that's the reason why we lost the game. No, there were other players that made mistakes that didn't say gaps down. They didn't clear the zone properly, doing no wraparound passes and not the clean pass. We had that going on in flashes throughout the series. So just to circle and say, oh, Carson was minus four that the made the, the last game of the series is the reason why we lost. No, you got to look at the whole series and look at the breakdowns that went through throughout the series and not just look at the last game and be like, oh, Carson had a bad game, that's why we lost. Or oh, whoever had a bad game. It, it was a great series. No one expected us to push Florida to six games and you know, the, the, had them, you know, down for the first three games of the series, but they had to fight back to get the lead and win the series. So I'm not, I was this, like I said, I was upset the way that it went down, losing the lead and, you know, the last two games and ultimately losing the series. But what can you do? It's hockey. We, we, we've been there before. At least it wasn't a lackadaisical effort like we saw a couple of years ago when they got shut out of game seven against Pittsburgh at home. You know what I'm saying? So it could have been something like that. But we saw this team fight. Like I said, oh, she got the late tip in with a minute and something left. You know, they wanted it. And then, unfortunately, you know, some of the bounces just didn't go their way. We've seen this before. We won the cup. And we've seen it after we won the cup. It's, it's not any different. It's just frustrating as hell. That's pretty much it. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm asking Gil, uh, how do we get rid of 70 for his contract and any goalies that you think that we can bring in? So if he wants to mention in Facebook chat, either of those, because uh, I, I didn't see any goalies that I really wanted, but uh, maybe Gil has seen some and like maybe he has some idea of how you can shed that contract. I know, Carol, you don't want to get rid of it, but I just I, I can't in good conscience think it's going to be good for four more years. Like. I just don't, I don't see it four years from now. I, I, his offensive potential is there and there's no doubt, but I just don't know. I just don't know how we get enough money to get enough players to get around this current team. Cause even to just keep the status quo, eventually we're going to get these guys off their rookie contracts and we're just not gonna have enough money to go around for this whole thing. So it's a, it's a tough situation. Uh, Josh Kirby also just tuned in. It says the caps number one priority is an experienced goaltender. 
which I agree, but how do you get an experienced goaltender for under the cap space that we have? Um, and which goalie are we keeping and which are we getting rid of? Uh, I'll ask you that quickly, Carol. You keep both or just want one of them? Well, this is Sam, well, Samson of what has what, one more year on his contract. No, both of them are free agents. Yeah, so, I mean. So both of them we control the rights to because they're restricted free agents. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's depending on how live to let comfortable with them. But, I mean, they have cheap contracts. Both of them show flashes of, you know, potential of being the number one. It took Braden a couple of years to get locked in before he was, you know, lived up to the potential that we all had for him. So, I mean, if, if the coach is confident with going forward with those two, like I say, this, this is your guy, Robbie. I'm, I'm riding on you with Live Yolette. So, I'm always going to, you know, give the faith to the coach that, you know, he's there, he has the experience. You know, he's one of the top winningest coaches in the NHL ever, American born or period. So, I mean, if he feel comfortable going into next season with the two young guys, if there's no way to get a veteran with the cap situation, then I got to ride with him. Yeah, so there's an interesting question uh, by Tom asking uh, what happens to the contract hypothetically of Baxter if he doesn't play. I mean, there's talk by some people that say the injury is so significant, well, whether he's going to come back or not from okay. this. Um, or if he's like a year old. I think he should take a year off, get get the surgery, rehab, and come back for you know Ovi's you know last couple of seasons. That's my gut feeling, but I'm also a diehard Nicholas Backstrom fan. That's what I want. Uh, but my understanding, and Gil can let me know if I'm wrong on this, is if they actually retires, not goes on long term IR, that the contract comes completely off the books, um, and that we do not owe it. Gil was also mentioning the only way we're moving 74 is if we're eating some of the salary. So to speak to Carol's point earlier, you can't renegotiate a salary, but when you trade a player, you can retain salary. So we could make it so that some other team doesn't have to pay 8 million for him. Uh, but then obviously that cuts into our salary cap. So, um, which kind of sucks to have dead salary, you know, it's not going towards a player. Um, and uh, he says, Oh, is it Vuele Huso of the Blues, the best potential free agent out there? I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but not sure he's worth it. Um, and Josh says, is it just me or did this loss not sting as badly since we won a Stanley Cup? I totally agree. I am way less angry than I ever was in any of the years where we choked before we got the Cup. I will. I would not have probably done this show in, in a pre-Cup, <laughs> you know, or at least not the next week, right? I would have probably yeah. – take a couple of weeks off or something um, <laughs> to get my thoughts around it. But I don't feel that way anymore. Carol, is it, does it sting less for you? Oh, it definitely does. I mean, one thing I've said, you know, I've been covering the football team for a long time and they haven't had success in a very long time. And to me, Caps fans are kind of worse than the Commanders fans because they've had success in the last you know few years and can, you know, at least – have something they hang their hat on and, you know, at least have been, even though they hadn't won the cup, but have been winning division championships and have been in cup contention for a long time. And the fact that they're still so rabid is, is kind of crazy to me right now. I mean, we were four years removed from a championship and, you know, folks are still. People like, want it. They want a new shiny all the time, Carol. Oh, I mean, I that's. I get it. I get it. But as a lifelong DC sports fan, Hey, I know. I mean, my son has already gotten more championships than I had in the previous 20 years. So I, I, I get it from your perspective. Well, I get it from that perspective. We've had so many <laughs> years of not having any success and to be able to have WNBA, MLB, uh, DC United, you want to even throw that in there, and NHL champion in the, in, in the same span of a two, three year span. Yeah. The fact that we get to wear these shirts and have the graphics behind yeah. you, and, you know, I mean, I'm excited we won. Yeah, three of like, course, I, I want us to win every year, but we're not Boston, <laughs> you know. So, like, you know, it's like. I'm chill. You know, like I say, four years removed and, you know, first round exits, I get it. It's frustrating, especially after you win in the cup and you want to, you know, enjoy the, the long playoff run and, you know, I get it. I enjoyed that playoff run myself, especially covering it with the show. But mm. like they always say in every sport, there's only going to be one team that's going to be happy at the end of the year, and that's going to be champion. So and the same thing for their fan base. So it's uh, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, I understand the frustration. Like I say, I'm not discounting any other 
fans uh, comments or anything, you know, I have my own opinion. You know, I love hockey just like everybody else. We all want the same thing. You know, we just had different opinions about it. So I don't want to <laughs> disrespect their opinion because I have my own. But, you know, I just, you know, as an ex-coach, you know, coaching football and playing, I have a unique perspective from the player and the coach standpoint. So I try to have the patience of the coach and give the insight of the player. So, I mean, I always try to be optimistic in my outlook and I try to give the coach the, the you know, reasonable doubt, especially when it's a quality coach. Now we talk about Jay Gruden and never mind, it's a whole different ball game. But I'm taking Robbie's word on Live Ulette. You know, that's his guy. I'm a ride with him. And, you know, see yeah, I think he deserves another. I mean, there is talk that you could just fire him and bring back Trots and try to also make a trade for Hopi and see if we could just rekindle all that chemistry all over again. But I don't think. I don't think that that would happen, but um, that would be a great dream. I saw a post about it. I was like, oh man, if that just worked, that would be amazing. But oh, you will uh, believe some of the comments on Twitter. Uh, uh, Twitter a little uh, some of them. I thought Facebook folks. <laughs> oh no, I, I I refuse to look at the Twitter comments, but a lot of great comments here. Um, uh, Brian Brian Bingham said they all still sting, and and Tom says uh, four straight first round losses is what stings. They could have at least advanced a round or two instead of going out right away. And Brian also then said uh, being the underdog and not supposed to win maybe made it a little tad less painful. Uh, but it was how they lost that he found it very frustrating. And then Gill said a really important thing: Backstrom could hypothetically put a long term IR if he takes a year off. Which I mean, he didn't say this, but that would help us with our cap situation at least for the next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the danger of his retiring early is the cap recapture clause of the salary cap agreement. And it's too much to explain here. But I think that I remember um, that if a player retires, that we don't get to use all of that, um, all that salary cap thing. I'd have to do a little bit more research uh, on the understanding of that. Uh, and Josh said, I was disappointed and confused on how the cap's goaltending was so bad, but it didn't uh, sting for so long. I didn't actually think the goaltending was that bad. Oh. I really don't put this on them. I put it on team defense right, more. Wasn't bad at all. I mean, the, Florida had the most 30 goal scorers in the league. They have snipers on their squad. They have people that can shoot. And a hell of a goalie. And, <laughs> and defensively. So, I mean... You know, Bobarski, you know, he was uh, 14 games in the 500 for his post-game career. He's been with Columbus most of that, who was not offensively skilled. Me and Robbie had this conversation before the series started, you know what I'm saying, that he has a shoddy playoff record. But he's never been on a team that can score like Florida can score. So if he does make a few mistakes like we saw him do against us, he has a team that can recover from that. So, I mean, it doesn't – it doesn't. It, it, that's why I say it's every year in different places you go – it could be a goalie under the radar that the capital signed that, you know, not a big man or whatever, but he can come here, get locked in, that fits in with the system or something just clicks with him. And then next thing you know, we got a, a Vesna winning goaltender taking us on a run that nobody even saw coming out of nowhere to do anything. So as I say, well, hockey is it's such a it's such a different sport that the, the most minor thing or one change or one little adjustment can change the whole complexion of your team and turn you from a, a question, you know, is this team a contender to somebody that's on their road to the championship? Oof, I just read what the cap cap recapture penalty was, and it's way worse than I thought. Um, yeah, we get, like, no relief if he does, because, I mean, it's minor, but basically you're paying money over all the years that you would have been paying him, and it's a certain percentage comparatively to what he was owed. Uh, but it's not like you get suddenly all of Backstrom's money back if he retires, you know, which I mean, is, he does yeah. the season off and it gives him some care. Yeah, I think I think the season off, get the surgery, get get right and um, come back for you know the last couple of years of Obi's career is the answer. If anyone was asking me, but um, <laughs> they're, they're probably not going to. But it gives you an opportunity to bring some young guys up and see what they can do. It also gives you a little bit of cap relief for next year. Uh, and the active cap that you can then go and sign some players. And then who knows, maybe they could pull like they, the lightning did and bring him in, in the playoffs, you know, or something crazy like that. But um, I know they're, they're trying to get that out, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I know that it's already almost 10 o'clock and we were talking about how we would only talk capitals for 30 minutes, but we knew how this was going to go. Um, uh, Brian did say it was amazing how we shut down their power play. And then Josh said, it's, yeah, their PKs was perfect, which I agree. I was mm-hmm. shocked by that. I uh, was waiting for that to fall apart in the last game or something. Um, 
And uh, I just want to give a shout out to all the people on Twitch. A lot of people are joining us. Uh, DJ uh, just joined us as well. And Carly and Andy uh, and a lot of other people have uh, been joining in on the chat. And everyone's been chatting on Facebook, too. So I've been monitoring awesome. two chats. And I think it's really cool to get um, you know all of this uh, on there. Let's uh, quickly go over some of the other series, because I think that we've talked enough caps. I think that people get the sense of where, where we're at. I know we'll maybe bring Anna back sometime in a couple of weeks and we can talk a little bit more off-season stuff. Sure. Um, um, and uh, but let's just talk about how the series uh, and the bracket ended up. Uh, so Florida obviously won ours. Uh, Tampa Bay uh, played Toronto in a crazy series. I really feel for uh, Toronto fans. Ten times in a row, they've had an opportunity to advance and they have failed uh, over the last couple of years. And so any Caps fan feeling bad today, just be happy that you're not a Toronto fan because that's brutal. It's not even like opportunities to stave off elimination, which they've lost a lot of those, mm-hmm. but it's, you could win it in a game six and not even go to a game seven and they can't even win those games. And right. um, so that's brutal. I really thought Toronto being the higher seed is going to win that series, but Tampa Bay being the two time defending champions came back and uh, won that series um quick thoughts carol on that one uh robbie i uh, really can't have a thought right now because all of my streams have just shut down at the same time bro. okay I- i'll just talk with anna about them then and <laughs> you can try to figure all that out at least i got the caps uh segment in there um yeah on some of them uh, they oh. shut down the- yeah and, uh, oh man i'm starting to get the, the, F- the, F- the fbi is shutting us down at least we're alive. Say, carol it's yeah. john carlson Right, it's his fault. <laughs> He's trying to call shutting me down. All right, we'll, we'll let we'll let Carol uh, deal with all of that, um, and, and we'll talk about some barking. of the other series. It, it's okay, uh, Carly. I'm sorry that you're gonna have to hear the next one. Um, she's right now modding for E flat guy. They've raised five hundred dollars uh, for, for charity right now. Um, and uh, so uh, if anyone wants to know more about that charity, if they do exclamation point revive, uh, we're raising money. Uh, for the uh, as part of the Heart Music Festival, we haven't talked about it yet. I'm going to talk about it at the end of the show, but um, it's important for uh, the American Heart Association. We're raising money on some music streams that are happening right now. We're actually going to raid into that stream and uh, help them raise some money after this is over as well. If people do want to give, the donation link is now in chat on Twitch. Um, and if anybody's interested on Facebook, you can add a comment and I will respond back with the, the link and information. Um, and uh, or they can join us on our Twitch. Uh, feed as well um so i'm sorry carly uh you had an opportunity boston did to win it but carolina was just too good and they uh won that series uh four to three uh, in a very exciting uh game seven uh they go on to face the rangers unfortunately uh brian isn't able to join us uh tonight um uh I, we thought there might be a conflict that ended up happening. So, but anyway, I'll, I'll talk on his behalf. Uh, it was a very exciting game uh, where the Rangers were able to force overtime and then win it. The bread man uh, Panarin um, uh, was uh, able to win it and lift them to a huge victory. And I'm so happy for all the Rangers fans that were in Madison square garden. Uh, they were elated. I know that, People are like, oh, you're a Caps fan. You can't be happy for the Rangers. But if anyone's a true Caps fan, they know that the Penguins are our number one rival. And any mm-hmm. team that knocks them out of the playoffs um, is okay by me. Um, <laughs> and I'm almost wanting to root for them in the second round against Carolina just for knocking out Pittsburgh. That's yeah. how much I appreciate uh, not having to see Pittsburgh advance. Um, and so that one was four, three. Uh, so either the Carolina Boston series or the Rangers Pittsburgh series, you have any thoughts on either of those, Anna? I don't, I, I'm feeling the same way with it, with the Rangers. Uh, we need, I needed, you know, once I saw Boston out, it was like, okay, there's don't have to see Marshawn's face again, um, which was good. And then, but as soon as I saw the pens out, uh, I had this little, like, he snicker snicker moment. They, they've and, also been out four years in a row in the yeah. first round so after so, three consecutive championships by those two teams yeah neither have yeah. made it past we're getting we're getting some new some new names in there so carolina uh i now i'm like uh but it is going to be hard with the rangers because we all know who's on that team that i hate Hate. Yes, I know. I know. It's a bunch of jerks versus Ryan Reeves, the biggest jerk, right? Yeah. So, you know, so, so it's like, uh, <laughs> what, do I, what do I do? But maybe he won't get any ice time, but who knows? 
<laughs> right. Oh, I don't think I asked you. The Tampa Bay Toronto. Any thoughts on that choke? No, I was pulling for Toronto to be honest. I was too. Uh, I, I was. I was. It, like you just want to be like, come on, this. You guys have it. Like you. Are you kidding? You know, and, uh, and Tampa Bay. I'm just. I'm just over Tampa Bay. Like, uh, move on. I'm done with them. Carol, are you back on your feeds? Or are you still working on it? I'm about to start restart streaming now. I don't know what happened. That's okay. Well, 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 this hockey segment will be on it. We'll still get the baseball and the football and all the stuff on the other one. Um, Anna, your thoughts going on the West Coast? Uh, Carol, you have any thoughts about the uh, the East Coast series before we move to the West Coast? Uh, uh, now nah, you go. We get into the West. Okay. Um, so we got Colorado crushing Nashville. We talked about that last week. They swept mm-hmm. them. Uh, St. Louis beating Minnesota. Um, you know, four games to two. I think Colorado is just going to destroy the Blues in this series. Anna, what are your thoughts? A hundred percent, and uh, that's who I'm going to pull for. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, Carol, any thoughts on it's time. <laughs> the domination that is Colorado? Uh, after they dominated Nashville like they did, because I actually did have them getting upset. Um, I cannot go against them. No, I cannot. Do you think the rest is going to hurt them and not having it as hard of a first round series? Mm-mm. Uh, it's possible that they do have a, a speed game and a timing game, so it's possible they could hold them back, but I don't – it's possible. That's all I can say. I, I can't say that's definitely going to be a determinative factor, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into the other side. So uh, Edmonton, L.A., that was a really interesting series. I thought L.A. was storming back and was going to take it mm-hmm. from Edmonton. But Edmonton was able to come away in a game seven. And then the same thing in the Dallas uh, Calgary Flames one. I thought Calgary was going to crush Dallas in that series. Right. It went seven. And Dallas, I thought, could win that one. But Calgary put up just a crazy number of shots. I took a screenshot of it. Let me just pull it up right here. So this was going into overtime. So both games uh, yesterday went to overtime uh, in a game seven, both the, the New York Rangers versus Pittsburgh and the Stars uh, Flames. After three periods, so after 60 minutes of hockey, the Flames had 108 shot attempts, Carol. 108 <laughs> shot attempts. That's insane. And 50, tells you how much they 50, wanted it, right? 52 of them got through, Carol, mm. to 43 shot attempts and 23 getting through for Dallas. So it was impressive for Dallas even to make it to overtime. I mean, what a what a feat by, by the goalie. Um and, uh, yeah, I mean, offensive zone time, they had almost uh, 30 minutes of offensive zone time, which is a lot in hockey. So uh, just an incredible performance by the Flames. And then they ultimately uh, found a way to advance. It's going to be the Battle of Alberta. Uh, of, yeah, it's going to be this crazy matchup between the Flames and Edmonton. Mm-hmm. It's just a big, big-time rivalry. So I'm excited about that. Just like it's a battle for Florida, uh, for the Florida Tampa Bay. And it's crazy because all these years, those teams never played Florida and Tampa Bay. And now two years in a row um, after never playing each other before in the playoffs, uh, they're going to get a chance for a rematch against Tampa Bay in that one. So um, I'll ask Anna and Carol, because now we're talking about the first place series on both sides. Carol, do you think Florida is going to pull it off in Tampa Bay or Tampa Bay is going to get to the third or to another Eastern conference final? Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting series. Florida definitely is a better team than they were last year. Uh, Tampa Bay had some struggles with Toronto going to seven. Um, I'm going to give Florida the advantage just because Tampa is going for a three-peat. They played a lot of hockey. And uh, that seven-game series against Toronto isn't going to help them going against Florida, especially with Florida having an extra day of rest uh, after finishing the caps in six. Yeah, for sure. All right, now this Edmonton-Calgary series, which we've seen both these teams a couple of times this year, and we thought both were really good. Uh, it should be a really entertaining series. It sucks that it's going to be so late at night. I probably won't get to watch a lot of these games. Uh, but, um, Carol, what is your thoughts on that? And then I'll get Anna's thoughts on uh, on both of those other series. Yeah, that's going to be uh, interesting. I'm not sure who uh, to go with in this one. You got two young teams, two high-flying teams on home ice. Not really defensively sound. You have questions sometimes with goaltending. They give up some, you know, leaky goals sometimes. But uh, 
guess I'm a uh, hmm. trying to think. Should I go there? A little bit more experience in Calgary over the young Connor McDavid in Edmonton. Uh, we got a Canadian who just entered chat right as we were talking about it. So when we talk hockey, and we, they will come. Uh, and he <laughs> thinks um, he thinks go with the goalie. Calgary wins. That's what his That's opinion is. I'm going to go with Goudreau and Calgary, but then having a little bit more of a veteran presence on that team and a little bit more time together. I'm going to give Calgary the edge just for that reason, but I'm not going to sleep on Edmonton either. Right. Anna, your thoughts on the East uh, one versus uh, three seed Florida, Tampa Bay first, what's your thoughts? I'm going with Florida. I think they're, I think they're just going to ride their, their high and, and their streak and they play a physical game as we experienced. And um they're a damn good team. And yeah, I think that Tampa Bay is pushing it with the three peats. So boo with the, with Tampa Bay, um, man, Edmonton. God, I'm like so torn, but I think I'm going to go Johnny hockey. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm rooting for Edmonton. Cause I'm, I'm a fan of Edmonton. They're the only yeah. team that I, I like still left that I actually like, you know, I'm going right. to root. Um, I'm still so torn on that Carolina, New York Rangers, who to root for. I'm going to definitely root for Colorado in that series. Yeah. And I think I'm going to root for Florida over Tampa Bay, just for all the reasons we're talking about. Like, I'd like to see a new team get there. I also like my dad has always told me, I know that he's probably still watching on Facebook, always go, root for the team that beat you because then at least you lost to the best, right? If they ultimately win the cup, yeah. then you're like, oh, well, we took that team to six and they won the cup, right? Yeah. That's a better story than, oh, they just got swept in the next round or something, you know? Yeah. So um, so that's at least my theory on that. Um, I'm just checking if anybody has any more questions on Facebook. I don't think they do. I think we've now gone and talked hockey for over an hour. Um, uh, but, uh, and I'm super happy that we got to break it down with you. Did, were you able to be on the power play point podcast this week? Yeah, we recorded yesterday. It was, it was our last episode, but you know what Gil and I left it on just such a fantastic high with ha- opening the show up and people, um, joining and, and filling in for me and all that craziness that happened this year. Um, so we just had a big shout out to all them, which was, which was great. Was it just you or did anyone else guest on this show? It was just the two of us. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we said we we would do, um, you know, kind of a summer, uh, I think like, you know, a couch round, uh, round couch, whatever he's wants to round table, uh, just to kind of go over, uh, how we're all feeling going into the next season. So. Yeah. And I'm going to give your uh, command over here. And if anybody is watching on Facebook, if you go to sportsothp.com, click on the team sports OTHP. You can click on Anna and get all of her social media links and all that. Uh, also click on the, um, the podcast partners button and you can get the latest episode of Power Play Point podcast. I have had a crazy couple of days. I've not I checked out the latest one yet, but I'm sure that it is fantastic. As it has You know what? Gil got so wrapped up in the games last night that I think it's coming out. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay, well, that yeah. makes sense, but I didn't see it. I was very busy. I don't know if I would have seen it. Yeah. No. Uh, but whatever it does come out, I'm sure it'll be great. And um, I'm sure that uh, it'll be some great roundtables with a lot of people that joined us. Uh, oh, Gil just said the show just posted. So there you oh, go. Perfect. We're just uh, good timing. Um, and uh, thank you, Gil, for joining us. And thank you all uh, our hockey fans and friends for joining us on Facebook or anybody checking us out later on any of the different platforms. We really appreciate talking hockey with you guys all season. I'm sure we'll have Anna on in the off season and we'll talk more. And I'm sure that maybe I'll join a Power Play Point podcast. And I know that other guests will, too, to Definitely. talk about the off season because there's so much more to talk about. Uh, but, uh, I think this is a pretty good recap of the last week of hockey for all of that. And we'll definitely give scoring updates and how the playoffs are going, uh, in round two in future weeks as well. Um, but Anna, thank you so much for joining us and giving us extra time tonight and we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk to you soon. All right. Take care guys. And, um, yeah. Okay. Carol is back for some reason it froze on my computer. So you are there. Good. All yeah. right. Take care. Good luck with the, the car sales. I'm always pulling for you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Man. Appreciate it. All right. Talk to you guys later. Week. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you, Anna. All right. Well, uh, Carol, maybe we'll just quickly do uh, baseball because I do know that you wanted to talk about the scores and I still have the, uh, the, the wizards, uh, or not wizards, sorry, the NBA <laughs> round table um, to break down stuff too. I, I mean, if you want to break down the games, that's fine. I'm going to take a break while you do. 
Um, yeah, just a quick rundown, and uh, because they did take the loss tonight, eight to two to the Marlins. Yeah, we haven't done many break-ins because it wasn't looking very good. Yeah, it was a typical game. The uh, starting pitching uh, didn't come through, and the bullpen, you know, gave up a couple of runs late. Nats got a run late in the game to make it eight to two, but it was four to one for most of the game. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and recap the week that was and look forward to the week ahead, and then that'll give me time. And I even go ahead and uh, throw the Mystics in there to get ready for the NBA uh, roundtable, which I'll be covering the playoffs. All right. The, the currently now the Nats are sitting twelve and twenty-five. Uh, the last ten they are two and eight. Last week they were two and four, and starting off this week. 0-1, oh, unfortunately, as I said, is taking a loss to the Marlins, 8-2. Um, yeah, I'm good. All right, uh, as I mentioned, they won two games last week out of six. We were hoping for at least a three and three week, and as Robbie mentioned earlier, this is the third week in a row that they've been, uh, yeah, Turn this camera off on me. Give me a second. I'm going to keep doing this. There we go. Riley left me high and dry to tell me to turn this camera off for me. Um, yeah, they lost uh, two out of three to the Mets and lost two out of three uh, to uh, the Houston Astros with their first trip back to Nationals Park since the Nets. Beat them in the 2019 World Series. This series against the Mets, who's the top team in the NL East, and ironically, NL East is the only division that doesn't have that only has one team above 500. So all the other teams are not playing to their potential, including the Nets, who are in fifth place, as I said, at 12 and 25. Uh, the first game of the series versus the Mets last week was a 4-2 loss. Uh, Carlos Carrasco earned a victory for the Mets that put him at three and one. He went six and two thirds, giving up seven hits, two runs with five strikeouts and no walks. Uh, Carl Evans Jr. took the loss, that dropped him to 0 and one. He went one in and gave up three hits, three runs with two strikeouts and a walk. And Edwin Diaz earned his seventh save of the season. He went one in and gave up one hit, no runs, one strikeout, and no walks. In the bottom of the fourth, Mikael Franco had an RBI double. In the bottom of the, <clears throat> excuse me, bottom of the fifth, Riley Adams hit a solo home run. Uh, second game of the series. Oh, this game, uh, the first game definitely had a, it's a 4-2 loss. Nats had a chance to get closer, but uh, Yadier Hernandez got thrown out of the plate. I believe it was in the bottom of the fourth after uh, Franco had doubled. And he got one run in, but unfortunately, Hernandez got thrown out of the plate. That would have made it a 3-2 game for the Nets as opposed to a 4-2 final. Uh, Nets got a couple of late runs and, as I said, secured the save with Edwin Diaz. Uh, second game of the series was a win for the Nets. They uh, beat the Mets 8-3. Aaron Sanchez, who took them out tonight and you know, snuck up the place in the early innings of the game. Which is the main reason why the Nets are they don't have inconsistent starting pitching. And uh yeah, this game he pitched very well. He earned a victory that put him to two and two. He went five and a third, giving up six hits, three runs with one strikeout and no walks. Uh Tyler McGill took the loss for the Mets. That dropped him to four and two. He went one inning, giving up eight hits, eight runs, one strikeout and one walk. And this was a crazy game because uh in the first uh two innings of the game, all the runs were scored. The Nets scored three runs in the top of the first. The Nets scored five in the bottom of the first and then scored three more in the second. And that was all the scoring for the game. Uh, the first innings, Juan Soto hit a solo home run. And the first, uh, Luis had an RBI single. Uh, Franco had a sacrifice fly. D. Gordon had an RBI single, all in the bottom of the first. And then in the bottom of the second, uh, Nelson Cruz hit a three-run home run to account for all the runs for the Nets that game to, to get the victory, the lone victory of that series, 8-3. And the uh, last game of the series was a 4-1 loss. Uh, Taewon Walker earned the victory for the Mets. That put him at 1-0. His first victory, he uh, 
uh, seven innings, giving up three hits, no runs, and one strikeout and one walk. Uh, jo- Joan and Doan took the loss. They dropped him to one and six. He uh, went three and two thirds, giving up three hits, three runs, two strikeouts, and five walks. So, yeah, that's been one of his issues all season, uh, giving up walks. We give up walks. It's never a good thing. And uh, Juan Soto hit a solo home run in the bottom of the ninth to avoid the shutout at home. And something else. Because the next game is off after that 8 2 loss. And yeah, as I mentioned, they lost that series to the Mets. They lost two out of three going into the matchup versus the Astros, who, uh, as Brian Brennan mentioned last week, were one of the hottest teams in the league. They were on a 10 game winning streak. Uh, came in the Nets part, looking to extend that. And the first game, they were able to extend that to 11 games because they defeated the Nets 6-1. to one. Yes, the Nets lost that game 6-1. to one. Uh, Fram- Framber Valdez earned his second victory of the season for the Astros. He put him at 2-2. Two and two. He went seven and two thirds, giving him seven hits, one run, six strikeouts, and two walks. Josiah Gray took the loss that drops him to four and three. He went six innings, giving him six hits, six runs, with five strikeouts and two walks. Uh, in the bottom of the seventh, Escobar had a fielder's choice that scored a run to account for the one run the Nets put up that game. Second game of the series went a lot better for the Nats. They were able to end the Astros at that point, 11 game winning streak. Uh, they beat them 13 to six. Josh Rogers earned the victory. I put him at two and two. He went uh, one inning, give him no hits, no runs, and one strike out in the walk. Uh, Christian Javier took the loss. That dropped him to two and one. He went three and two thirds, giving him eight hits, seven runs, five strikeouts, and three walks. Uh, first inning, Yadier Hernandez started the scoring out with the RBI single. And the third inning, he uh, added to the total by hitting a three-run home run. And the fourth inning, Cruz had a bases loaded, clearing RBI double, getting three RBIs in. Uh, Michael Franco in the bottom of the fifth had a two-run home run. Uh, in the bottom of the sixth, Josh Bell scores on a pass ball, and Ruiz walks in the run. In the bottom, uh, still at a six, Robles had a two-run RBI single, accounting for the 13 runs the Nats put up in, the, in that Houston Astros winning streak. And the final game of the series, which was played yesterday, was an unfortunate 8 nothing shutout to the Astros. Verlander took the mound. That earned the victory for the Astros. That put him at five and one. He went five innings, gave up two hits, no runs, with five strikeouts and three walks. Uh, Patrick Corbin is once again winless on the season. That drops him to 0 and six. He went six innings, gave up six hits, five runs, five strikeouts, and two walks. Uh, like I said, Houston was a team that was very hot. They came in uh, playing some good baseball. Dusty Baker is also the manager. His first time back as a manager since, you know, he left. And uh, unfortunately, uh, once again, the starting pitching was the issue. And then the starting pitching was doing okay. The bullpen, you know, gave up leads this past week. So it's still a growing experience, uh, two and four for the third week in a row. Now we're sitting uh, 13 games under 500. Uh, It's not a good place to be at. Hopefully this team can get some momentum and start winning some of these series instead of losing two out of three, start winning two out of three. Um, As it is frustrating, uh, Juan Soto in a two hole and I'm still not really feeling that. You know, he got his first uh, home run with actually a man on this past week on his other with seven home runs and then solo home runs and then the two hole. Uh, Nelson Cruz, he's had a, a lot of RBIs, but his batting average is low, so he hasn't been getting on to so-called protect Soto. Josh Bell, you know, he's been hot since the start of the season. So, I mean, the potential is there, but you have to have pitching. And then we've had some uh, errors in the uh, 
fielding with errors, with uh, especially in the middle infield. Uh, Escobar last week had two horrible throwing errors that you know kind of opened the floodgates in one of the games when the Nets had the lead or were close to recover, reclaiming the lead. So it's just been a lot of inconsistent inconsistencies with the team right now. But they have a lot of young players. You know, we know about the players that we don't have anymore. We still haven't seen Strasburg pitch this year. We still haven't seen Joe Ross pitch this year. Uh, we mentioned Arado Parra a couple of weeks ago that he moved to the front office uh, to help with player development. So, I mean, there's a lot of things going on. You know, also heard from the learners possibly selling the franchise. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a rough season. Uh, hopefully we can get more three and three and four and two weeks than these, like these last three, two and four weeks that we've had. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the upcoming week. Uh, as I mentioned, we had the Marlins for the next two games now, so they took the loss today. They were all 640 starts. Tomorrow will be a 640 start on uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be a 640 start. Thursday, they have the day off, and then Friday, they head to Milwaukee for a three-game set over the weekend. Friday is an 810 start. Saturday is a 710 start, and Sunday is a 210 start. Uh, Milwaukee is, you know, playing some good ball too out there in the Central as always. Uh, hopefully we can, you know, like I say, split the week, go three and three or possibly four and two, try to chip into this under 500 record that we're sitting at right now. Uh, it's never good to be under 500, especially, you know, 13 games under 500 this late in the season. Well, it's still early, but, you know, got to start getting these series wins and try to turn that around. And unfortunately, we haven't seen that from this team lately to be able to string victories together. We see the potential. We see, you know, one good game. They're getting 17 hits and putting up 12 runs. And then next game, they had three errors and, you know, giving up, blowing a four, uh, four run lead, uh, the ball, then giving up on a starting pitcher, getting off to a rocky start and giving up four runs in the first inning. And they're playing catch up ball the rest of the way. So, it's a little bit frustrating, but it's still early and, you know, never know what the next game, next week, next month, you know, baseball is a long season. We want to see what happens with this team going forward, especially with uh, Juan Soto re-signing is definitely a key priority for this team. They cannot afford to let him go. He is basically the foundation the future of this franchise. So I'm hoping they can get that deal done because, you know, you can't take losing another superstar from this franchise, especially after losing Trey and Mad Max last year. I couldn't take losing Soto again this year. I agree. A uh, couple of thoughts, Carol. I was thinking I do want to talk about the schedule for the Commanders, but I'm thinking maybe we do it next week. You know, this you know, yeah, yeah, gone about, a lot longer. And going to Mystics and Gray, going to the yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the that's the play because the schedule is not going to change, and you know, we actually might gain a little more insight spending an extra week thinking about it. So um, we'll definitely talk about that as well as uh, all the round two matchups for hockey, and of course more of our World Series. Uh, champions from 2019 talk um and uh but yeah let's talk about those mystics i'm a little bit surprised by this game uh carol but break it down for uh the people it's another uh 2019 champion team so that was my segue um but anyway yeah the uh mystics they were three and zero as we talked about last week they uh took a loss on uh it was a thursday to the dallas wings uh up ahead of the early even uh, yep you're right that is what it was yeah the dallas wings they lost to the dallas wings 94 to 86 and no hold up 76 i'm sorry hold up whoa 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 i got two different scores here uh it was 94 to 86 yeah okay i'm looking at the wrong game that's what it is okay they play again on tuesday though there'll yeah, be a chance for a rematch home. yeah it was mm-hmm. uh it was a home and home Washington currently sits number one in the East at three and one after taking that loss. Uh, uh, get her name out. Della Don, I'm just going to last name. I'm, I'm having problems. Right? He, uh, she had 20 points, five rebounds, and four assists. Atkins had added 19 points, four rebounds, and four assists. They uh, pretty much led throughout this game. They put up 29 in the first quarter. Dallas came back and put up 22. It was a uh, 
They put up 19 in the first, so it was a close game at half. Uh, Dallas went on a uh, had a stellar third period where they put up 25 points and held the Mystics to 11, but the Mystics put up 31 points in the fourth trying to uh, come back, but unfortunately it came a little short because Dallas put up 28. Mystics took the the eight point loss, 94 to 86. That third period, uh, kind of third quarter, I'm sorry, really uh, changed the momentum of that game with the Mystics being in it. And uh, they came out, Dallas came out and put the clamp on them in the third period. They made adjustments and held them to 11. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of that in the upcoming matchup tomorrow uh, at Dallas, because this was the home game. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. Dallas had only played one game before that, and the Mystics had played three. Uh, so, but they did play another game at New York on Sunday, which they won uh, 81 to 71. So now they're two and one and they sit second place in the Western conference. Now, uh, after that, um, we didn't really know what we had in them, uh, but really before, because they'd only, they'd lost their only game before they played Washington. Uh, so uh, it'd be interesting to see how the mystics make adjustments and come out and uh, play in that next game. And I, I think if that's right, is that the only – no, there's a game also yeah, – uh, two other games. Fri- yeah, two other games, yeah. Do, yeah do you have – Friday at, uh, at the Atlanta Dream, that's a 7.30 start. And then Sunday they go against the Chicago Sky at Capital One Arena at 3 o'clock. So It's at, it's yeah. at their arena, not Capital One. But, yeah. I mean, I'm so used to saying Capital One. Uh, what what's the name of their arena again? Uh, their their arena is the um, the sports and entertain the entertainment and sports arena. Yeah, I still haven't made a chance to get down there yet, but uh, yeah, we need to get down there for sure. Yeah, definitely got to get down and check out the mission. I think if if Champ's still in chat, I know that he's uh, been um, moderating tonight. Uh, he I think was actually there, I believe, for a wrestling this past weekend. So, so that's great. Well, I saw you posted the pictures of being at the event. I didn't know where it was at. That's yeah, I haven't had a chance to get to that venue yet. So yeah, hey, Champ said, "Yep, he was there." So that's exactly right. So that's kind of cool that it's used for things like that um, as well. And if anyone's interested, there's a Pokemon in chat. Uh, but yeah, but uh, Carol, do you know anything about Atlanta or Chicago or any thoughts on playing those teams? Uh, no, it's going to be. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do a lot of WNBA research. I've been, you know, just finishing up with hockey. Now I got to get in a swing for baseball and WNBA, so I have more uh, in-depth coverage of the Mystics next week. When I Atlanta have. sits at three and one, uh, so they have uh, beaten Dallas, the aforementioned. They also beat Los Angeles, which is the number one team in the West, and they beat Indiana at Indiana on Sunday, 85-79. They have lost to uh, the Aces, which is Vegas's team, uh, so that is um, that team. And then the other one – uh, was I'm trying to remember what it was. It was on Sunday, right? Um, that was the sky. Uh, and how are the sky doing? The sky are um are two two and one. No, it says one and one here. Do they just win a game? But anyway, the sky are okay too. I mean, it's hard to know. We've only played three or four games, so there's still that feeling that I'm out early. Uh, but it'll be interesting. We'll have a bunch of games to talk about next week. And uh, good night to Carly. Thank you for um for modding a chat i appreciate all the mods for joining uh tonight but uh yeah i'm excited to see sort of how they're able to rebound you know after their first loss and see how they do and because it's a two-game road series in the last games at home at three o'clock and champ says that it's a really nice arena which is cool yeah definitely check it out but i'll go ahead and let you guys get into the nba round table and cover these uh playoffs uh we got in and ran a little late on the cap, so I know y'all want to get ready to rock and roll with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch up my feed and turn off my camera and let you guys rock and roll with the NBA. All right, sounds good. I'm also going to switch out my logos and welcome Tim to chat. Tim, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to talk about basketball. Yeah, uh, I'm excited. This has uh, been a really cool playoffs. I think we also have a room, uh, so I think that he'll be joining us in, in just a second, maybe. Um, and um, but anyway, well, until he does, we can. Uh, I'm going to do a quick screen share to make sure that that's all working, and then uh, from there we can talk about the different. Um, uh, here, does this work? And then yeah, it does. 
Awesome. Um, so I think Arun's in chat. I see him on the call, but I don't see him. Let me see if he can. Arun, are you there? Arun, the voice of Arun. Anyway, uh, I'm sure he'll come in the chat. I'll let him know in the group chat that um, uh, that we're on. Uh, but anyway, um, so Tim, uh, what are your overall thoughts um, of this, uh, uh, how these playoffs are, have been going? Oh, it's just crazy um, how the series went long in round two. Like there were two game sevens yesterday, but the game sevens were terrible blowouts. And the teams that a lot of people thought were going to win just got crushed. So it's not necessarily the teams that everybody expected that got this far, but I think it's a good, they're, they're good matchups. And, uh, you know, just the Suns especially, just to, really disappointing, so. Yeah, I agree. Arun, how are you doing tonight? Good, my mouse was not working, but now I was able to fix my you mouse. and like sur <laughs> Survive the great mouse uh, debacle of uh, 2022. So <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, you and, um, uh, your dog for joining us as always for uh, the, the great insight uh, into um, the, the week that was for the NBA playoffs. Um, and uh, so let's just get into it. Uh, let's break down uh, the different series. Uh, so let's do the 76ers and heat series uh, first. Um, so uh, when we last left it, it was, hold on, I gotta get to where we were. So there we go. Uh, so, on uh, so there was a game two, uh, which the Heat won one nineteen to one hundred three on Wednesday. Uh, that was the day after we had broadcast last week, and then the Seventy Sixers came back and won ninety nine to seventy six in the first game in Philly on Friday, and then the Sixers won uh, one sixteen uh, to one hundred eight to tie the series at two on Sunday, um, and then uh, the uh, Sixers. Uh, 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 the Sixers or uh, the Heat beat the Sixers one twenty to eighty five, and then the last game the Heat won uh, ninety nine to ninety uh, to take a four uh, two win in the series. Um, so I, what were I'll start off with Tim. What was your thoughts on the series? Well, I just think uh, you have to focus on the seventy Sixers just falling short again, and. Um, they, they have a really good team. They have a lot of talent, but they, they can't put it together when it matters. Um, Embiid has never reached the Eastern finals and he's a uh, runner, runner up MVP two years in a row. And he was really honest after the game that James Harden was not the same player. And just the fact that James Harden had another terrible uh, closeout game when he got eliminated just shows that he kind of chokes when it matters. And he, um, I don't think he made a single shot in the second half of game six. So just um, the 76ers are really disappointing when they got eliminated at home, their fans were booing them a little bit and Miami just played great defense this whole series. And Jimmy Butler was great. They're very deep. Um, they have a lot of players that are, just undrafted but they play really well so most people don't expect Miami to win the Eastern Finals but I think they have a chance and they they played pretty well at the end of the series and uh, Arun what are some of your thoughts on uh, this series and particularly this game yeah I'm not really shocked that Philadelphia is booing uh, the <laughs> team <laughs> it's given that they booed Santa Claus but um, James Harden, maybe he's related to Santa Claus with the beard, but in the last two games he had fewer points than he did in game four where he had 31 points. I think that was like the second time he had 30 points with the 76 er uniform. I don't know if it's choking, if it's, he just can't get it done anymore. Like he's just not the elite player that they traded for. Um, I think Miami probably struggled because I think Kyle Lowry, he was playing injured and, both of those losses. And um, I think the Sixers also, I think Embiid, you can't disregard that he's playing with an injury. And um, 
Jimmy Butler playing with a little bit of a vengeance. He may be wrong. I don't think they chose Tobias Harris over him. They chose like just not to pay him. And it's looking pretty bad. It's a karma loss, I guess, for 76ers. They they really should have, they probably, they definitely should have kept Jimmy Butler. He's actually only a couple weeks. There's only a couple weeks age difference between Harden and Butler, but Harden looks much older than Jimmy Butler. And Miami is a better team. And they just, they Miami, I don't know how to rate Miami going forward because they, they've just taken care of business against like the Hawks and the Sixers. They, I wouldn't rule them out either against the Celtics. I think it's going to be a really close series. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I uh, I was surprised at how quickly they wilted. I thought this was going to be a, a better game here, uh, but it wasn't. So let's get into some of the other series uh, just for the sake of time. Um, so uh, let's talk about the other Eastern uh, Conference. Why is this? Hold on. All right. So here we go, uh, which is the Celtics uh, versus the, the Bucks series, um, uh, which uh, was kind of interesting. Uh, I was uh, surprised. Um, let me just see if I can pull up, like, I just want to do it like this so we can get all the different games. So, um, there was a game on Wednesday and a game on, uh, Friday, and then there was a game Saturday. So the Bucks won 110 to 107, uh, in game five, and then 108 to 95 on, um, May 13th on Friday. And then, uh, Celtics won 109, uh, to 81, at home in a game seven. I was surprised the Celtics went in and uh, beat Milwaukee uh, in game six. I I really thought Milwaukee was going to finish that series off in six and it left the door open for the Celtics to come back. Uh, Tim, I'll start with you. What were your thoughts on game? um, Well, you can talk about five, six and seven or whatever games you want to talk about specifically. Yeah, this series was really interesting because um, it was close, and after game one, a lot of people thought Milwaukee was going to run away with it, but uh, both teams uh, had momentum, like, kind of back and forth. But game five, you know, the Celtics just kind of threw away this game, and they uh, basically gave it to Milwaukee in the fourth quarter, and Giannis deserves a lot of credit for this comeback win in Boston. But after this game, you know, you would think as a Celtics fan that they're probably going to lose in game six in Milwaukee. But Tatum was great, um, especially in the fourth quarter and scored like nearly 50, I think. And um, he saved their season and, you know, just it was a pretty close game in game six, but Boston just pulled away. And then just game seven was a dud. I mean, Uh, Milwaukee played pretty well in the first half, but um, they played terrible in the second half. They couldn't make any threes in the game, and Boston just crushed them in the uh, the second half and made a ton of threes, and um, just a lot of role players were on fire for them. So disappointing season for Milwaukee, but I think they'll be back, and um, they missed Middleton, so he'll be back, but – I don't know. Boston looks like a, like they're on, you know, they're kind of a team of destiny. So we'll see. Interesting. Uh, which game would you like to talk about? And uh, what are your thoughts on the series? Um, I'll talk about game six. I guess um, Tatum, he had 30 points in the second half. And I think that pretty much sealed it. And I think Giannis was great, um, but he didn't have much help outside in the perimeter, like Holiday was at 17, but Grayson Allen had three points. Wes Matthews had four points. Um, Bobby Portis off the bench had four points. It wasn't going to get it done. And I think that trade, they traded um, for Serge Ibaka. That was a mistake because he didn't even play this series. They gave up DiVincenzo and two second round picks. I think they needed another perimeter player, maybe not DiVincenzo, but um, they just didn't have enough scoring, especially with Middleton out. I thought he was going to come back. There was rumors in game seven that he'd come back. And as Tim alluded to, the first half was close and the second half was just a blowout. And um, yeah, 
the Celtics do seem like the best team in the Eastern Conference right now, but this playoffs has been pretty unpredictable. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so looking ahead, uh, game one uh, is going to be tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, if you're not listening live, it's at 830. Uh, then game two will be on Thursday. Um, and then game three will be on Saturday. Those are both at 830. Um, and then um, for, uh, I guess it's all of them. And then actually it'll be a live 830 game. Game four uh, will be live during our podcast next week. So it'll be kind of fun to have a live look in. Uh, on that matchup as well. Uh, Tim, what is your initial thoughts on the Celtics versus the Heat? I think, uh, like Karun said, it's probably going to be a close series and long. Um, The Celtics probably should be favored because they've just played so well since the first half of the season when they were struggling. And they have a new coach. Um, Took them a little while to figure it out, but they've been playing great. And Tatum and Brown and everybody, they just have a lot of scoring, um, a lot of three-point shooting. But I I also can see the Heat pulling it out. I mean, I really don't know who to pick. I think I'm going to say Celtics in seven, but I can see the Heat winning because they have so much experience and um, clutch players too. So, But still, I'll just say Celtics in seven. Yeah. Uh, Arun, what are your thoughts on uh, this series? Yeah, it's a repeat of the conference championship in the bubble year where the Heat, um, I think, pretty easily took care of the Celtics, but this Celtics team is significantly better, specifically on the defensive end. Um, will they get Robert Williams back? I think that's the key because um, Bam Adebayo um, feasted that last series. I don't think he's as good as he was two years ago, but I'm – don't really know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to lean towards the heat and seven just because they have home court. But I think the Celtics, this is probably the key of the series is game one because they have a short turnaround. If they win game one, then I'm probably going to flip. So that's how close I think this series is. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, let's talk about the, the Western conference um, a little bit. Uh, let's start off with the Grizzlies uh, and the Warriors, uh, the series that didn't, uh, go seven. Uh, but uh, let's break it down here. So um, there was a game that was happening on Wednesday where the Grizzlies won uh, 135, four to 95. Uh, so that was the day after our last podcast. And then um, the Warriors won um, uh, the, the last game, uh, which was on Friday, 110 to 96 uh tim what are your thoughts on this series Uh, this series was was really close i'm i know just going to six um and obviously there were a few blots doesn't tell the full story just because there was a huge injury to uh, morant and early in the series there were obviously some close games that could have gone either way so i mean the Grizzlies should be um, pretty optimistic about the future. You know, they were a high seed. Maybe they could have gotten to the third round, but they really did give the Warriors a lot in this series. Um, I do think the Warriors could have closed out in five, clearly, because Morant didn't play. But uh, just that game in Memphis when Memphis crushed them, I think Golden State just took it easy and – Memphis actually plays really well without Morant. Um, You could even argue maybe a little bit better because I think their players just kind of watch him play. And they have a lot of good players uh, around him. So they look good in that game. And then game six, it was just the Warriors were too much at home. Clay was clutch at the end. And Memphis played hard, but um, it's really hard to beat Golden State um, at home. And so I think Memphis will be in the playoffs again next year, but the Warriors are like probably the title favorites right now to me. Interesting. Ariel, what are your thoughts on this series? Yeah, it's like, I think Memphis, a lot of people ruled them out after John Morant was out for the series, but they actually played pretty tough. Um, Even without Morant this season, the regular season, they're 20 and five. 
And um, Warriors were missing a couple of former Wizards, actually, Gary Payton and uh, Otto Porter. So I think the series got a little bit close. Even that final game was pretty close. And even though it's a 14-point win, um, the Grizzlies were up by three points with, like, I believe eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. But then Golden State played its, like, best offensive ball in the series. I think Tim may be right that there's something about this Grizzlies team without Morant. They're just, I think they're just more locked in defensively. Um, I think Morant can get better, but right now at this stage of his career, he's not, he just makes a lot of mistakes, but they definitely missed his offensive power in um, the last game because 96 points, um, especially in the final six minutes, Golden State's defense just locked down Memphis and they'll definitely be back. Um, but I didn't really think Memphis had a chance, given that they, I, even before the Morant's injury, because they were kind of showing their inexperience against the Timberwolves by giving, by getting behind by double digits. And I think Warriors were too poised to um, let that happen. And yeah, the Warriors, I don't know if they'll win the next series, but they, they definitely, they're one of the teams to beat for sure. Yeah, so let's talk about the team that they're going to have to uh, beat, uh, which is the Mavericks, uh, which is an interesting series for sure. I was kind of surprised how this one uh, turned out. Uh, When we last left them off, it was um, uh, was on Tuesday. The Suns were beating the Mavericks. Uh, We're talking about that game, 110 uh, to 80. And it just looked like the Suns were going to run away with this series. And uh, the Mavericks turned around on Thursday and win 113 to 86. And then they're able to win yesterday, uh, Sunday, if you're not listening to live, um, 123 to 90. It was sort of a really surprising blowout victory uh, by the Mavericks. Uh, Tim, how did this series uh, turn around so quickly? I think um, just Dallas played re- well. Both teams played really well at home. And um, Dallas, like, fell behind in games one and two, I think, and didn't really – I mean, they were they were sort of in it, but um, they just needed to get home to get comfortable in this series. And also, Luka is so clutch that even though it kind of felt like Phoenix would play really well and close it out in game seven, he was just so much better than basically the entire Phoenix team, so – um, it was kind of unexpected because a lot of people wrote the uh, Mavs off after uh, game two, but um, they're a really good team. And that huge trade for Dinwiddie uh, really changed their team. And um, yeah, they're, they're clicking at the right time. So I think they, they're definitely going to be a, a good uh, opponent in the Western finals. For sure. I was just shocked because I mean, when I was talking to Brian last week, we didn't really see it going this way, um, which w- I don't think anybody in really did. Or at least, yeah, at least not having a game seven that was such a blowout. I thought it would be a little bit closer than that. Arun, what are some of your thoughts on the series? Yeah, I think the turning point of the series was probably Jay Crowder. He got banged up in the series, and and I think in game seven, he was specifically really terrible in the first quarter. I don't know why he was taking so many shots, and Luca was on fire and the first quarter was already ballooned to double digit, I think like 15 point deficit. And then Dinwiddie came in. And in the first half, Luca had 27 points. Dinwiddie had 21 points. And the Suns combined as a team had 27 points. So the game was already kind of over at that point. Even Bertans has played, I think he's actually played better than Dinwiddie. So, but I think the Wizards, for the, as far as the Wizards are concerned, I think Porzingis is still a pretty good player. It might be a win-win trade, but the Mavericks, if they're playing that great offensively, and I don't know what happened to Chris Paul and Devin Booker in game seven. Chris Paul only scored his first field goal when they were down by already 40 points in the third quarter. Same with Devin Booker. He, I think he also scored um, DeAndre Ayton, the number one pick. He was picked over Luka Doncic, which doesn't make sense at the time, and that definitely is going to – this is another karma loss um, because Luka Doncic probably remembers that Phoenix had the number one pick. They had his former head coach from the his EuroLeague team, but they still didn't take him. So, And 
But who had him being this good? Like, I just, it blows my mind. Like, I, I watched him play. He's a phenomenal player. But I never, in my wildest dreams, thought he would be one of the greatest players in the NBA. Well, he so, was the EuroLeague MVP at the yeah, age of Yeah, like 18. 15 years old or something. But yeah. I still, but we, we've, how many times has a Wizards team taken some really great Euro player and had them not show up? I just, I mean... I don't know. I just that don't. Not the, he's not Jan Vesely. That's for yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like shirt, shirt whatever we get the Euro, whatever we get the Euro top five draft pick, it doesn't seem to pan out. So I just you know I, I don't know. It's it's hey Vesely was the number six pick. If he's the number five, he would have <laughs> okay. Been okay, yeah. It. It's just Dallas picks good Europeans. That's that's their yeah. Thing. Dirk, Dirk, and Luca, and even Kleber, like that guy's. He yeah. um, he's essentially the Przingis replacement. Now they have Berton, so yeah, Latvian laser, yeah, another European. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Berton's definitely put up a ton of points in this game. Um, yeah, the zero, the big zero. But <laughs> so he, played, like, he he did his job in Game Six. He had like he's actually hit forty five percent of his threes in this series. They didn't need him in this game, but I yeah. think he's part of that twenty seven point. Uh, defense. I I, I couldn't believe Burke Tans was playing good defense. So that's yeah. He didn't get scoring, <laughs> so, yeah. especially with Chris. He has many points as Chris Paul in the first half. So that's good for him, I guess. Right. Just it's just interesting. But I mean, he's playing his role, obviously, right? So they they're not they're not losing out on the trade. The team definitely got better, in my opinion, since. Uh, the trade so or phoenix uh, is just really bad i don't know which but it's still <laughs> surprising no one had dallas beating them no, or, be, or being this good when that trade happened so i i don't so it, it's interesting the less uh let's just talk about this upcoming uh series uh with uh, the the warriors um we'll have the first three games to recap next week and then uh game uh we'll look ahead to game four um so the first game is on Wednesday at nine. Game two is on Friday at nine and game three is on Sunday at nine. Tim, what is your uh, thoughts on uh, this upcoming series between the Mavericks and the Warriors? I think it, again, it's, it's, it's tough and it's going to be close. Um, I think the difference between this and the Eastern conference obviously is the experience. I mean, Luke has been in the playoffs a lot, but never this deep, um, he always shows up for game sevens, at least so far in his career. So I think he'll play well, but I do have questions about the rest of the Mavs team against, you know, the you know, the Warriors season group um, when it matters. So I'd probably take the Warriors in their home court in like six or seven, but I could totally see the Mavs winning again. Um, just because they they're just they're clicking and um, they're really hard to guard because they have a lot of other guys that can score besides like Brunson and um, Luca and uh, Dinwiddie. So you know, like it's not just three guys, but uh, the Warriors are just so experienced, and I think they ha- they have a better coach. Although Kid has done a good job this year, so yeah, it's a tough matchup i mean i honestly think the mavericks have a really good shot at this because i mean no one thought that the suns could beat them and i feel like the warriors are i mean they're not the same team as the suns but like they're similar you know and they were able to you know shut it down when it mattered the most what are some of your thoughts on this series this is both a good matchup and a bad matchup at the same time for the warriors it's terrible because they don't have anyone that can guard Luca, especially with Gary Payton out and Otto Porter is I guess going to be relied upon. Andre Iguodala's out. It's good in the sense that the Mavericks don't really have a big man and that's kind of the Warriors' weakness. They they have Draymond and Kevon Looney and that's about it. And I think um, DeAndre Ayton would have feasted on the Warriors, but I, they don't really have to worry about Kleber and Powell that much, but I think this series is like a really a toss up. I've seen a lot of people picking the Mavericks. I kind of am siding with Tim, I guess, that the experience of the Warriors is probably going to win out. But I think Luca is probably the best player in this series. So I, I'm Curry's as made hasn't played his best basketball yet. So he, he'll need to. He needs to make more than six threes a game and he's he hasn't he didn't do that so far this postseason but he's more than capable of doing that 
I don't think they really needed him to, but they definitely need like an A plus performance from Curry. I don't really trust Clay, but I think Jordan Poole is probably better than Spencer Dinwiddie. And I don't really trust Jalen Brunson, even though I'm a Villanova alum, but I don't trust him defending Steph Curry and Jordan Poole like on pick and roll. And I think um, the Warriors offense is much harder to uh, stop, especially because they'll be shooting the ball and like Chris Paul and I don't know what they kind of just gave up. And I, I don't think the Warriors are going to do that. Yeah, it's such an interesting series. I don't really know who to pick. Uh, my gut is feeling I do like the the history of the Warriors, but I don't know. I just think this Dallas team might be a team of destiny, kind of like what the Celtics look like um, on the East. I just I don't know. It's It's going to be an interesting matchup for sure. But I'm excited to have you guys on uh, next week to recap the first three games and to talk about a fourth uh, game for live. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully both can, uh, can join next week. Uh, but uh, if not, I will definitely recap them. Um, maybe we'll get Brian back as well. We'll just have to see how he is with all the early mornings, but I really appreciate you both uh, for coming on uh, and, uh, and talking a bit of basketball before I let you guys go. I, I did want to talk uh, since Brian isn't here um about um the uh tc united they were able to tie um uh inner miami uh 2-2 in their game uh so that's exciting uh they play new york city fc uh brian's team uh on wednesday may 18th um and new york city fc uh won their last game against the columbus crew um and i think tc united actually has two games this week yeah they've also played on saturday so the first one was a 7 30 game um at home against new york city fc and then uh, they continue their home stand on saturday just a couple days later that's a four o'clock in the afternoon game um so uh, again against toronto fc so uh, two interesting matchups uh for dc united it's now four one and five on the season so i just wanted to get that in there um Tim, I'll start with you. Any final thoughts or any topics you want to talk about before I let you go? No, I'm just uh, glad the Penguins lost. And uh, it's sad that Brian's not here to celebrate that, but we can get his thoughts next week probably or soon. And um, yeah, just uh, hopefully these these NBA series are good because no more caps. So got to yeah. got to find joy somewhere. Yeah, I've suddenly become a much bigger NBA fan. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it yeah, is what it is. Right off the pain, right? Right. Well, that and I just don't have the caps to watch. <laughs> so that makes yeah, it a little bit time. easier that, like, I have more time to watch uh, some more sure. basketball. So, uh, but I appreciate you guys uh, for helping break yep. down all those different series. And, uh, Tim, we'll, I'll talk to you hopefully next week. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Yeah, for, and then, uh, Arun, any final thoughts uh, before we let you go? Uh, yeah, I guess Brian didn't get to talk about the New York Red Bulls beating DC United 3 nothing, but um, the Rangers, it's good that they beat the Penguins. The Caps, that after that 3 nothing lead, it was kind of, I just felt like it wasn't going to be their year after they blew that game, but I think they'll be back next year and hopefully. And I have a real quick question. Do you think that we should fire sale or do you think stay with it and move on? It's just a I don't know that you, you're probably more qual. I, I, they definitely need some kind of change because I think they, they don't, I mean, the Oshie, Backstrom, Ovechkin, cause that stop, but then like, I don't, I guess, um, and Manta's pretty good, but didn't, they didn't really have anybody else step up and the goaltending was kind of bad. I don't know. We'll see how that app like helps next year. And, it's just kind of sad because Ovechkin played great in the postseason, but it was just kind of wasted. Yeah, I thought he played pretty well too. A lot of people were like, "Oh, he didn't score a lot of goals." I'm like, "Well, he had like I think six assists or something." So uh, he played pretty well, and they were like double teaming and putting the best defense on him. So yeah, um, just was the defense wasn't and the goaltending wasn't there. That like especially giving up. A yeah, I think that the, I think it was the defense. Yeah, the team defense wasn't there, but the other thing was like I think Sammy played good. But he didn't like put one of those whole beast game six Eastern yeah. Conference finals where he just shuts everything and shuts the door. If he had done that, you know, in game six, we would have won, you know. So, like, and it's not necessarily his fault. The defense left him out more to dry than Hopies did against Tampa Bay. But at the same time, uh, I think 
he, we needed a shutdown performance from him in a closeout game, and that, it didn't come. So yeah, it's, it is what it is. But uh, Arun, any final thoughts before we let you go? Yeah, just the final thought is, is, is did you actually pronounce it Samsonov? Or that's like the only, because it kind of got in my nerve just the way they pronounce it. But I guess that's the way they pronounce his name, which is cause kind of annoying. I, I, I've always done it Samsonov. But yeah, that's I, what I think. But the yeah. like, answer is like Samsonov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there is a debate, but I don't know. I, I we always call him Sammy, so it just makes it shorter. Sammy's better than it, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that. All right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Arun. I appreciate it, and we'll uh, talk to you hopefully next week. Sure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. All right, Carol. We got it all in. We got soccer. We got women's basketball. We got the NBA playoffs. We got the NHL playoffs. We got uh, baseball uh, and the Caps and uh, final hockey thoughts. So it was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was a good run. Uh, any final thoughts to you, Carl? Uh, no, just uh, like I say, another uh, ending to the hockey season that we didn't want. Um, we got Nats baseball. You know, unfortunately, like I said, thirteen games under five hundred. You know, we're still starting out pretty good, three and one. Uh, United, you know, they're doing okay. Uh, all season for football. Like I said, we have a command special coming up soon. Breaking down the schedule and the free agency and the undrafted free agents and the draft picks and get ready for uh, OTAs coming up soon. They already had the rookie mini camp, so the rookies already got the playbook and already delving into it. Uh, gonna definitely have that covered. Make sure you check out the website sportsothp.com as always. Check out my YouTube channel, Carol Porter the Third, with Three Eyes. Uh, check us out, you know, live streaming as always, highlight videos. I'm um, try to get some baseball highlight videos out when the Nats win. I mean, they work on getting those out like I did for the Caps, like I do for the Commanders. You know, always try to keep the content going out there. Uh, check us out this week. Uh, I'm thinking Thursday. Uh, still having locked down the time. We'll call the boxing guy. We're going to have our boxing special Thursday. Either eight o'clock or nine o'clock Eastern. Haven't uh, decided yet. Depending on what time I get off of work, and we'll be recapping the last few months. And Carol, that's gonna be on Twitch as well. Yeah, still gonna be on Twitch also, so you can tune in on my Twitch page, CP3. I just shared it, the Twitch link on our Twitch channel here, so people can feel free to click over and check Carol out. Yeah, so we'll be having our boxing special, recapping the last few matches that we haven't talked about. We haven't had Paul on in a while. And look at some of the upcoming matches and some of the storylines going on in boxing with uh, some of the potential fights. So tune in for that Thursday night. I'm thinking it's going to be around nine. So I'll say you can go ahead and say 9 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have Paul the Boxing Guy on. And as always, every Sunday night around 6 o'clock, we're going to have uh, At The Bar Radio. Yesterday, we had a great guest, Melissa V. Mill, uh, singer from the area that's doing big things unfortunately my youtube channel wasn't up working right but you can go check out on at the bar radio page or facebook or oh carol i got some good news what's that some some gil did some research for us i appreciate gil so we're, we're going to do a correction at the end of the show here before we left off so it turns out because we didn't front load backstrom's contract to get, to get out of something you know and have like a lot of the money at the end and then he retires and we don't have to pay for it. Right. And so that's what the whole idea behind it is. Um, uh, so according to our good friend, Bernie, uh, it's not a, a front loaded contract. So if he does retire, it should come completely off the books. So that's an interesting thing to think about. I do not want my, one of my top two favorite capitals of all time to retire, but maybe go in long term give us some cap relief and then think about it. That's what I, don't, I, want to do. I think he still got some hockey left in him. So I think he might take the year off, get the hip right and come back. You know, but Ovi's got to be the year Ovi was going for the Wayne Gretzky's record. So I, I can see that happening. Yeah. Well, I, th- I thank Gil for letting me know about that before we were off air. Um, and, uh, but it does, there is a penalty if you try to front load a contract. So I just, you know, it's not like you can try to get away with just like forced retirement later on to save money, you know, but that's not what this contract was. So it was a pretty even contract throughout. Right. So anyway, um, but 
I really appreciate Carol breaking all the down. I'm going to miss talking hockey. We're, we'll definitely talk about the different uh, round two games a little bit next week uh, for sure and continue to talk hockey and bring Anna back, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, but I'll miss it, you know, like it's a big part of our, uh, our every day weekly thing. And I really thank so many people for tuning in um, on Facebook and, and, and chatting with us. And that was one of the most interactive cap stocks we've had in a long time. So I really appreciate everyone uh, for tuning in and giving their, uh, their two cents as well. And then if they're live on my Facebook, after our podcast ends, uh, we're going to be uh, joining uh, LG um, uh, on this raid train uh, as we're trying to raise money. Uh, so I really uh, hope that people can stick around for a couple of moments. I'm also going to talk about a couple of things uh, House King being on my YouTube channel and stuff like that as well. But uh, Carol, why don't you give our send off uh, for our audio and our Facebook people. And then afterwards, I will talk to my Twitch audience. All right. I appreciate you guys tuning in, listening, watching, however you check us out. Appreciate it as always. Sports OTHP, year seven, season, no, season seven, year six. Oh, we get it mixed up. But uh, as always, you know, we love bringing you the show, bringing you the content. We're looking to branch out, make some things happen. I got some, I always say I got some things that work, some reaching out, trying to make things happen. But uh, we working at the dealership down at Ward Honda, 2450 Crane Highway. If you're in the market for a vehicle, come, you know, pick me up, inbox me, come on down, call in 301 843 Call and ask for Carol, let me know what you're looking for. Give me the chance to earn your business. But uh, as always, DC sports about the politics. It's not just a catchphrase. It's not just a motto. It's what we do. CP3 and Robbie G for Sports OTHP, True Radio Network. And we out. See you next week. Recording stopped. All right. I think we are out live on Facebook and on the audio recording. I really appreciate everyone uh, for tuning in and joining us. It's sad that the cap season is over, but I really appreciate everyone for joining in on the Twitch. I know I can't always interact with people. I do try to chat uh, with you all as well, but I am monitoring two different chats, including uh, live with people giving me updates for contracts and all different sorts of stuff. I really appreciate uh, Tim and Arun uh, for joining us and giving us their insight. I'm sorry that we couldn't get uh, Brian on uh, this show. I know he wanted to talk about this Rangers and the big comeback. Uh, a lot of New York fans um, are really excited and I'm kind of excited for them, mostly because I hate the Penguins, but uh, for all, I'm happy for them as well. Uh, we're going to be rating in just a second uh, LG Music. I'm going to pull up his uh, information over here, but uh, he's part of a raid train um, that has been going on. Uh, so it's again, it's uh, twitch.tv slash the LG music. Uh, but before I go into that, I did want to do show one more thing on my screen. Uh, let me see if I can pull this back up. And I wanted people to see something that I'm really excited about. Uh, this past weekend, I got to take Zach to his very first concert. Uh, so if anybody wants to see any of that, uh, if people don't know, I have a whole YouTube channel. If you go to sportsothp.com and click on uh, Robbie G's YouTube channel, or if you go to youtube.com slash Robbie Gross, um, it has a channel and it's been dedicated to concerts I've gone to uh, throughout my life. I've been able to go to a lot of awesome shows and I like to share some of the footage. Uh, AJR is currently one of my favorite bands and it is my son's all time favorite band. He is three and a half. He got to go to his very, very first concert. Uh, you can see him here. Uh, if you'd like to check that out, the first 15 minutes of it are on my Instagram as well and on Facebook. Uh, but the whole video, 48 minutes, uh, he loves the video. Uh, it shows from the, the very beginning, uh, his first impressions. Um, I'm sitting near the lawn, so you get to see the lawn reaction, uh, all the different big screens, including some of the different cinematics and lots of other great stuff. Um, and he was great all night. It was a wonderful first concert experience. Uh, we had such a blast. I really um, hope that people enjoy it. 46 people have already seen it in the first 24 hours. So I appreciate everyone for uh, tuning into that. Uh, also on my channel, uh, we are under the concerts right here. Uh, Gail was the opener. She was phenomenal. If you want to check her out, 
um, I uh, posted uh, the A B C D E F U, which is her biggest single. And uh, so if you want to check that out, you can as well. We also will have tomorrow, this podcast will be up there. And you can go back and check previous concerts, uh, life moments, different vlogs I've done, other streams, including the We Speak English Good, um, uh, that's uh, doing really well um, on the audio podcast. With that. I think it's got over 2,000 listens already all my scuba videos, video game streams, and more. Uh, so if anyone wants to check it out, youtube.com slash Robbie Gross uh, for more on any of that. Um, all right, let's get into this raid. Um, so let me get the uh, raid call. Uh, thank you, champ, for that. And then, um, so I've created a thing. I think Cyberine is, there you go. Uh, so if people want to grab the raid chat, they can do that. We're again going to visit the LG Music. I will give one more shout out for the Revive Music Festival. Uh, um, and that we're trying to raise money for. Um, it's a, a really cool cause. I uh, will put the information for it into the YouTube and also onto the website uh, when I post this uh, in the next couple of days on sportsothp.com. Appreciate everyone for tuning in live. Uh, we're going to raid now. Um, I hope that you all have a great night.